So we talked about in the last video the document object model and we're going to start to put some of those concepts to use in this video. Now first I want to state quickly I altered the HTML on our default web page. So I've created a simple HTML button here and I've created a uh, function called change style and this is going to be our JavaScript function where we're going to put all of our code in to execute when we hit the submit button and uh, what are we going to alter we're going to alter some of the text in this paragraph element and I've created a ID called para1 and that's the ID we're going to be targeting now remember in CSS there's two types of uh, selectors that we can use. We have the class selector and we have the ID selector that we can use. Now you will remember in CSS we use ID for a specific element that we want to target. So that is what we're going to use in this tutorial. And let's just take a look at the JavaScript code. There you can see I created the change style function. It's empty right now. And so we'll be putting some code in here in a minute. But let's go back to our web page and let's just load this in whatever browser you want to load this in. And you can see here I've got the submit button and I've got this text right above it called some text for this tutorial. If we hit it, nothing happens, of course, because we haven't put any JavaScript code in it. Now, this is going to be a two-step process that we need to do. First, we need to grab the element ID, and we do this with the get element by ID method that is part of the document object that we talked about in the last video. So we need to use the get element by ID to grab this ID because we need to know which element that we're targeting in our JavaScript. So once we grab this, then we can go ahead and alter all the contents in this paragraph element. But first, we need to grab the ID to know where we're going in the first place. And so that's what we're going to do. And the first thing we're going to do is create a variable to hold our ID that we need to get. And that is our ID selector, of course. And now we're going to specify the document object. And we're going to use dot remember to access the get element by ID method. You can see it's right there. And we're going to go ahead and select that. And then we need to pass in a parameter. And that parameter is going to be this paragraph ID. We need to pass this in to our method. And this is actually where we grab the ID. So we put that right here. And so now we've got the ID. And that's good. That's step one. Now there's a second part to this. So all we've done so far is retrieve the ID and of course assign it to this variable. But we haven't done anything yet, right? We need to do something. And we need to alter this text when the user clicks this button. And that of course is where we can start to style. Now that we've got the ID, we can start to style the paragraph attribute. And we can just use another dot. And you can actually stack these dots together. And this is where we can specify the style object. This is the second part. So once we have the ID, we're good to go. And we can start to style the element with the style object. And you guessed it, it's just style. And then we specify a dot to access the properties. And these are all of the properties right down here. And you might be wondering why I have two columns here, CSS and JavaScript. I'll explain this in a moment. But for the first property we're going to alter, we're going to alter the color of the text. And so you guessed it, it's just color, as you can see there. And then just like in CSS, we can specify what color we want. In this case, we want blue. And then let's go ahead and now run this. And let's see what we get here. So if we hit submit, Ah, you can see our function got executed and it changed the color of the text. And so we have finally got to the point where we are now altering our web page using JavaScript. And so the page initially got loaded with black text and when the user clicked the submit button, JavaScript went ahead and changed the text to blue. And so now this is your very first interactive web page. Isn't that great? Now, we can pretty much change anything we want once you have this style object. This is the really neat thing about JavaScript. And remember, this is a style object and this is a property. So these are properties now that we are altering. And it's pretty much the same name as they are in CSS. And that's what I wanted to show you here. The color property is the same that's used in CSS. Same for border, same for margin. Now, what I'm going to do here is actually comment this line out because I want to save this line for you guys. And let's actually change something else. And we'll change the background color. And you can see right here, it's background color. So let's go ahead and put that in. Now, this is case sensitive. So in this case, we need the capital C. 
So we delete that and let's just change it to red. We'll change the background to red in this case. Now, what I want to point out here is this is the reason I have both of these columns. Take a look at this. In CSS, you will remember in my CSS series, we always put a hyphen. Remember, background hyphen color. But in JavaScript, it doesn't recognize that hyphen. So you basically just have to pull out the hyphen. It's pretty simple. But if you put a hyphen here, it will not work. So that's why I actually wanted to create both of these columns to show you that. So in this case, we take away the hyphen, and now it should work. And so let's go ahead and run this. And hopefully we get the background color changed. And there you can see we got a red background. And so I hope you get the idea here. We can change anything we want on our web page using JavaScript. We can alter any CSS property using JavaScript. And as you know, there are many more properties in CSS than just the ones I've listed here. Now you'll notice that font hyphen style also has the same rule. You have to drop the hyphen. Text decoration also has the same rule. You need to drop the hyphen. But this is where it gets a little bit confusing. You'll remember in CSS, we can change one part of the padding. We can change the left side, we can, or we can change the right side. In this case, I just used left as an example. But this is where it's a little bit confusing. The padding hyphen left doesn't drop in JavaScript. You see that? So you actually keep the hyphen. So that's why I wanted to put these here as well. Same thing with the border. That doesn't actually drop. So that's where this can be, like I said, a little bit confusing. And you just need to realize this when you start altering the CSS in your web page using JavaScript. Uh, so let's do a couple more here. And we'll just comment this out again. And uh, let's change the font style. We'll go ahead and change the font style. And let's make it italic. So we'll italicize it. And we just specify italic. And let's go ahead and run this. We hit submit, and there you can see our text is now italicized. So why don't you go ahead and play around with uh, all of the different CSS properties. Why don't you go ahead and look them up, start playing around with them, altering them, and we'll continue on in the next video with some other methods and some other objects. See you guys then.